Good evening, and welcome to the February 18th meeting of the Pocosin City School Board. Uh, Ms. Ms. Jamie will introduce our pledge leader, followed by our inspirational leader. Alexander Jones will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Alexander is an eighth grade student at Pocosin Middle School. Alexander is a member of the Pocosin High School cross country and track team. At Pocosin Middle School, he is a member of the Battle of the Books team. Alexander enjoys playing basketball, soccer, running, and reading. After graduating from high school, Alexander too plans to attend Yale University to study to become a lawyer and ultimately a judge. Please rise for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty for justice for all. Our inspirational reader today is Diamond Bagley. Diamond is an eighth grade student at Pocosin Middle School. She loves singing and dancing and hopes to become a cheerleader for Pocosin High School next year. After graduating from high school, Diamond plans to attend a college and pursue a career as a pediatrician or a professional dancer. When things go wrong, as they sometimes will, when the road you're trudging seems all uphill, when the funds are low and the depths are high, and you want to smile, but you have to sigh, when care is pressing you down a bit, rest if you must, but don't quit. Life is queer when it's twists and turns, as every one of us sometimes learns, and many a failure turns about. When he might have won, had he stuck it out. Don't give up though, the pace seems slow. You may succeed with another blow. Often the goal is nearer, is nearer than it seems to a fate and faltering man. Often the struggler has given up when he might have captured the victor's cup. And he learned too late when the night slipped down how close he was to the golden crown. Success is failure turned inside out. The silver tint of the clouds of doubt. And you never can tell how close you are. It may be near when it seems so far. So stick to the fight when your heart is hit. It's when things seem worse that you must not quit. Well done, thank you. Uh, the Picoso Middle School Band and Chorus students have taken center stage and created some unique ways to, re to recruit new musician members. Tonight we have a few of those students here to share how they are recruiting the next class of Pocosin Middle School musicians. Uh, presenting tonight are Avery Peshahanov, Cody Little, and Casey Law. Good evening, Dr. Parrish, Dr. Carter, and school board. We are here to tell you about our music advocacy and advertisement product project that we completed in band and chorus. Mrs. Sherman and Mr. Higginbotham challenged us to write a letter to a rising sixth grade student about the value of music and to advocate for music education at Pocosa Middle School. We spent a few days in the computer lab researching why music is important and why students should take a music class. We learned that students who perform in music ensembles perform higher on standardized testing. It is also a natural stress reliever, builds confidence, improves patience, and makes you work together with other students toward a common goal, a great performance. Once we researched more about why music is important, we typed a letter to rising sixth grade students about why they should take a music class. We told them about what we learned, and we also said why we enjoy music at Pocosin Middle School. Once the letters were written and typed, we decorated envelopes so each rising sixth grade student would get a one-of-a-kind letter. Once they were all decorated, the envelopes were sealed and delivered to Mrs. Brooke, the elementary music teacher, to pass out to fifth grade students. The second part of our project was to create a multimedia advertisement to encourage the future sixth graders. 
to take banding course, the first step we did was brainstorm different ideas for our ads. They could be posters, flyers, audio or video ads, or anything else we could think of. We really had a lot of voice and choice in this project. When we picked our final idea, we had to plan out what everyone in our group was, was responsible for and what materials we would need. Once that was complete and, improved by our t and approved by our teacher, we could get to work. Some materials were provided for us to complete our ads, but we were also allowed to bring in other materials. Some students painted rocks with music notes, some used sea cells, and others used stickers and many other crafts. Some students created videos talking about <coughs> different instruments like the voice, brass, woodwind, or percussion, and why they enjoy singing and playing. When our advertisements were completed, Mr. Higginbotham and Mrs. Sherman took them to the elementary school to be displayed in fifth grade classrooms as a way to encourage the students to sign up for band and chorus. Here are a few of our final ads. <laughs> this is only the second year this project has been done, so we were the first class to be on the receiving and creating end of this project. Last year, we received letters and saw the advertisements. This year, we were able to write the letters and create the ads. We were excited to share why we enjoy music at Pocosa Middle School, and we are looking forward to see how many students sign up for music next year. Thank you very much for the opportunity to tell you about music at Pocosa Middle School. Thank you so much, and I hope we get lots of sign-ups I thoroughly enjoy the band and the chorus. Uh, and now, do we have any additions or modifications to the agenda? We do not this evening. All right, we'll turn to recognitions. Uh, start with the Pocosin High School Senior of the Month. And yes, and as um, Vice Chair Sheeler comes um, to do awarding of the recognitions, students, if you could just stay till we're done with these recognitions, because we'll take a little intermission so we can come and thank you. First, we'd like to start with our Senior of the Month, and I would ask that Abby Barefoot come forward, please. Abby is an exuberant young lady who excels in the classroom, on the field, and on the stage. Academically, she has challenged herself with numerous honors and AP-level classes. Her hard work has earned her a place in both the National Honor Society and the Spanish National Honor Society. During her sophomore year, she represented Pocosin High School at the Hugh O'Brien Leadership Conference in Harrisonburg, Virginia. Outside of class, this young lady has been a member of the varsity field hockey team since she was in ninth grade, in addition to playing almost year-round with her club teams. When our hockey season concludes, she stays in shape by participating in both winter and spring track. She has also been a member of our show choir for the last three years and participated in the spring musical during her junior year. In addition to her many school activities, she's very active with her church youth group, where she has put in numerous volunteer hours by participating in various activities throughout the local community and in other parts of Virginia. Additionally, she served as the cotillion assistant for the junior cotillion of Hampton Roads and was recently employed by Beans Ice Cream. Upon graduation in June, she plans to attend Shenandoah University, where she will continue to play field hockey. Please join me in congratulating our February Student of the Month, Ms. Abby Barefoot. <laughs> Next, I would ask that Kara Joyce come forward. Kara is our Volunteer of the Month. Mrs. Joyce is a familiar face within the music programs at Bracosa Middle School. Mrs. Joyce has chaperoned almost every field trip and musical performance for the past four years. Whether she riding a bus with students to an assessment performance, chaperoning a group of students at the spring competition field trip, 
helping students get lined up and ready before a performance or using her truck to haul equipment, Mrs. Joyce is always there to help. Last year at concert band assessment, due to traffic, the students had to wait longer than anticipated in Williamsburg for the buses to return to pick them up. Without being asked, Mrs. Joyce decided to go to the nearby grocery store and buy some healthy snacks and water bottles for the students to have while they waited. Mrs. Joyce has also helped organize and pass out the cookies for the annual middle, Pocosa Middle School fundraiser each year. She does not need to be asked to help. She is always there with a smile and a helping hand. Her leadership skills, positive and polite nature, desire to help and support others, make her a valuable asset at Brocosa Middle School. And I can see that I say that I've seen Mrs. Joyce at numerous events. Please join me in congratulating her for being recognized as our Volunteer of the Month. Next, we would like to um, recognize our outgoing school board member, if Michael Troutman would please come forward. So we have his family in the background, so welcome this evening. Michael was on the school board for a year and a half. During that time, he supported the division in numerous ways. He was an advocate for students and their families. He was active in the community as a parent and board member. He assisted the school division by ensuring that our leaders were able to take part in the BB&T leadership training program for principal. It should be noted that that program has provided a powerful experience for our principals. He assisted the division this winter as we looked at possible options that would allow the school division to pursue a PPA with a solar energy company. His financial expertise was very much appreciated. Michael, we thank you for all that you've done for our students and division as a board member. We are excited about your new career opportunity, but we're certainly sad to see you leave, as the, leave the board. We wish you and your family all the best in the coming years. Please join me in thanking Mr. Troutman for his work and support as a school board member in Pocosa. And we have one recognition that is not on the agenda this evening. Um, it is um, the month for us to appreciate our school board clerk, and so we have just a small token of our appreciation for Lena Reimers, who is the clerk for the school board, and she does a fabulous job of assisting the school board as they do their work, and I must confess, she also helps to keep me straight as well. So thank you, Mrs. Reimers, for all your hard work. And with that, we will move into a brief intermission so we can come and talk to our participants.
think so, yeah. Well, all right, let's start this meeting again. Next up is Ms. Woodruff with the financial update. Good evening, Vice Chair Sheeler, members of the school board, and Dr. Parrish. For the finance report this evening, I want to provide you with a budget update. The House and Senate committees released their budgets on Sunday. However, we do not anticipate receiving the count tool until Friday to see what this means for us. As it relates to compensation, the governor's budget included a compensation increase for FY22, while the House recommends a compensation increase in both FY21 and 22. The Senate recommends a one-time bonus in FY21 and a compensation increase in FY22. The General Assembly will consider their recommendations while the session continues. The session should end on March 7th, and we will receive the final count tool shortly thereafter. As you may recall from Dr. Parrish's budget presentation in January, the city is facing a challenging budget year, which may limit their ability to assist with funding any compensation increase. We issued an RFP this year for health and dental insurance. We received a favorable response and may result in no increase in total premiums for next year. If there is no increase in premiums, this may provide funding towards a local match for any compensation increase from the state. There are different health plan options to consider, and next week we will meet with the Benefits Committee to discuss these options. Here are some important upcoming dates related to the budget process. As I previously mentioned, the General Assembly session should end on March 7th, and we will receive the final count tool shortly thereafter. This is what we plan to use for the superintendent's proposed budget, which will be presented to you at the work session on March 17th. There will be a public hearing on the superintendent's proposed budget here on March 24th. At this meeting, the school board can vote for approval. However, if the budget is not approved at this meeting, you will need to hold a special meeting on March 26th for budget approval so we can deliver the approved budget to the city by the end of March. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Ms. Woodruff. Uh, any comments or questions? If I could just add, um, just as a reminder, when I um, presented the update in your work session, you might remember that we had the estimate that our increase in health insurance might have been a, as high as 12.5%. So we also told you that we knew we were going to go out to bid, so and that has really helped our cause, which is going to um, on the, the right side um, of the budget, and rather than being in the hole, we'll be on the positive side of it because of that, which would help with the compensation um, if that does uh, come through the General Assembly. So I wanted to get that information to you, even though we still need to work out the details of the actual plans that we'll use. Thanks very much. Thank you. And uh, Mr. Pappas, would you come forward with the operations update and an update on the Middle School Modernization Project? Good evening, School Board Vice Chair Sheeler, Dr. Parrish. Among the many inspections that take place each and every school year that maintenance participates in, one such test is the test of all pressurized vessels. That would include boilers and um, some of the equipment in the kitchens. It's very important that we pass those tests every year. We did those tests, they've been inspected, and we've been reinsured. The windstorm we had last week um, brought with it not only large amounts of rain, but wind. And as such, uh, one of the trees at the high school suffered um, from that, and we will be removing that tree as well as at least one other tree in preparation for the portable classrooms that will go in that location. Food Service has some great news. Um, they reached new highs of over a thousand lunches served per day. Um, that's really good and encouraging. We're very happy to have that. That happened for every day last week. In the area of security, as you know, we annually have been lucky recipients of grant funds for security. This year, unfortunately, we didn't get the initial grant, but <clears throat> the state came back and we got a small amount earmarked specifically for the elementary school. Those funds will be utilized specifically to harden the exterior of the main entrance. In the area of uh, middle school modernization, as of 
today, nine of the 18 portable classrooms, one of which is a quad, making a total of 21 portable classrooms, um, has arrived at the elementary school. The contractor has buttoned them up, as in joined them together and sealed them, made them weather tight, put down the hurricane straps, and we're in the process now of working with fencing, painting, and electrical work, which will commence shortly. The remainder of this week, this month, and half of next month, he'll be bringing in the remain, remaining portable classrooms. Uh, additionally, the last two portable classrooms needed to complete such an endeavor and to be used at the high school have been secured. And before I turn it off over to Dr. Parrish so she can comment on this, is there any questions? <laughs> Anybody else have any questions? To ask Mr. Pappas about the hardening of the exterior, what's involved with that? Well, um, this is called a ballistic film, and what it does is it prevents someone who wants to get into a school that's locked and doesn't have access from breaking the glass one way or another and having it all fall to the ground and then simply stepping over a threshold. So we, our last few grants, we've been focusing on doing that. Cool. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, ma'am. All right, what I um, am going to do to finish out the presentation on the modernization project is talk to you for a few minutes about the schedule because the schedule has changed, which I've um, let board members know that, but I also want to make sure the community is well aware of that. So what you see um, over here on the screen um, are the items related to the middle school modernization project that we have accomplished to date. You've seen some of this before. I'm not going to read you this slide. I want to highlight um, the last um, two bullets on the slide. Um, what you see here is that we received what's called a 15% concept submittal back on December 3rd. So this is a very rough draft of potentially what the middle school might look like when the project is done. Um, after we provided that and provided some feedback for that, we then had a very important meeting on January 23rd where we did um, value engineering. So with the concepts that have been brought forward, Waller Todd Sadler brought in their structural engineers, um, anybody who's working in the project at any capacity, civil engineers as well, so that um, we could go through the project and really look at what the costs were for everything in the project. And as we had questions, um, we could answer them having all the experts at the table. So it was a very large meeting with not only our project steering committee from the school division, but also a number of um, employees from Waller Todd Sadler, as well as those that they contract out with. So um, that was a very important meeting for us. And let's go then to the next slide. So what you see is that on April 23rd, 23rd we're anticipating getting what's called the 40% 40 40 design submittal. That means they're 40% of the way through on getting a design to us that might eventually then be the final project for the middle school. So once we get that 40% submittal, then we will make comments on that, just as um, we've done on other submittals that we've had, get it back to them, and then they'll continue work. You see the next big date there is on um, June 10th, and that means that 65% of the design would be completed and submitted and we have moved that date forward to June 10th so that um, I will still be here and in hopes that you will have the new superintendent named and we'll be able to have that person at the table at that meeting so the person has an understanding of exactly what decisions have been made why we've done it and then is able to then provide um, any input that um, that person might have on that date so um, rest assured what you really see here is the bulk of the design work will be done before I turn out and then we begin to move closer to the construction work a question has come um, up out of the middle school when we get a new superintendent are they just going to change the entire design of the building and all the work that's been done so <laughs> I am reassuring everybody who's watching us tonight that that is not going to happen um, that we really will have the bulk of the work done it will remain in place because what you see then um, is on September 18th the pre-final submittal 90% of the design work, so you're really not going to make any changes and other than what might be needed to be made for bid documents. Um, what we would envision after talking to Waller, Todd, and Sadler folks is that 
Um, hopefully in June we'll be able to bring you more publicly then because we're at, we're getting at that 65% design. We know what we definitely can afford. We'll done all the costing out by that time. So you as board members can, can see those sketches um, as well as being able to share them with some other um, people. But uh, WTS has said that we need to wait till we get further because there's still too much that's fluid right now um, that it might become frustrating for folks. So the next slide then talks about the construction phase and gives you a schedule for that. Um, what you see here is that we would put out the invitation for bid um, in November of 2020. Now keeping in mind that we're going to still um, relocate all of our students and teachers and staff to the portable classrooms over the summer because what we don't want to do is say, oh, well, you, we could use the middle school for the fall and then move them all out and try and get everybody settled mid-year. It just doesn't make sense for so many reasons, but especially to keep our instruction um, the continuity that we want to keep for that. So um, on December 2020, so next December, we would expect to get the IFB responses and be able to evaluate those bids and then issue the contract for construction next January with um, as soon as the contract um, is locked down, then construction should begin um, in January or I would say February at the latest with a completion date of estimated being October 2022. And then this would be the time that we um, would uh, move students and teachers back in, likely over the winter break, a little easier to do the moving in than the moving out in terms of um, you're bringing everybody together in one place versus some of what we're having to do for the relocation. So um, that is the schedule now, and um, we wanted to share it with with the community and also um, we will share it with the city folks as well um, hopefully uh, barring any major um, issues it'll stay on schedule certainly with construction we know things can happen but given um, here quite a bit of time for that work to be done and the fact that we're taking everybody out of the building does make it easier for them because they're not having to phase it so um, we have gotten the question does this mean that the gym might be available next fall um, yes, that does mean the gym may be available next fall, so um, both Parks and Rec may be able to access, that, access it as well as a school division. Might get us partially through basketball season because we do use it as well. Um, we are eventually going to use the gym um, to store some items because it will not receive major renovation work, um, but we will work through the details of that schedule for the fall once you know we continue to move the football field um, will be available throughout the project, and I think we've mentioned before that we will move um, a bathroom trailer, which apparently, I think I've said before, is apparently bathrooms that are nicer than the current ones we have for the field and the trailer. So that will be there, um, and we are working through the team room issues so that we'll have that accessible so it will be able to use, uh, be used for football and other sports. That is the update that I have for the schedule for you. Any questions? In the math, right? So we're out of the building for two and a half years? Yes, partly because you're waiting for part of it because the building actually could still be accessible. Out. Yes, the um, architects have said we just need to be prepared that it may take that long for the construction because of some of the work that they need to do. Um, it's taken them a little bit longer to get us through the design phase because the structural engineers have gone in the building, on top of the building, and under the building. Um, and uh, have, you know, in doing that work, have just uncovered some other issues that we need to make sure that we address, which is why, why it's caused a shifting to some degree in design and why it is going to take a while to do the work on the building. So, good news, and what I will say to you is it's going to be an incredible um, Everybody gets moved back in, and hopefully I'll be allowed to, <laughs> to see it. <laughs> Unless you all hate it, then maybe don't call me. <laughs> That's all I have tonight for that report. Thank you very much. That's an exciting report. It is. <laughs> uh, Dr. Fox, can we get an instructional update, please? Yes. Good evening, Vice Chair Sheeler, School Board, and Dr. Parrish. My instructional update this evening is an overview of the new 1-1 Middle School Chromebook program that will begin later this year. So we're excited to share with you that in the beginning of March of 2020, we're going to roll out our 1-1 Classroom Chromebook program for students in grades 6 through 8. A Chromebook is a small, lightweight, personal computer running on the Chrome operating system, and it provides students with access to cloud-based applications such as Office 365 and the Google Classroom. 
Why are we moving to a one-to-one -one classroom program at the middle school? Well, in anticipation of the renovation and the modernization project, we needed to provide students with consistent access to devices in multiple locations, and we needed to find ways to allow students to carry fewer items between classes due to a lack of locker access. So additionally, students and teachers are also using these devices with increasing regularity. Funding for this initiative has come from our state technology grant and from the DODIA tiered systems of support grant. There is no cost to students and families unless we find out that there's been intentional damage to the device. When we roll this out in March, all students in grades six through eight will receive a Chromebook to use during the school day. The device will not be taken home and students will retrieve and return the Chromebook to their seventh period class. This will ensure that the device is secured in a charging station and ready for use the next day. Students will carry the device from class to class each day and teachers will work with them during the class period to know when they should be using the Chromebook for instructional projects or class assignments. Students will log on to their um, assigned Chromebook using the division issued username and password. By doing so, all of our division filtering software remains functional while the students are on the device. Students and parents are asked to read and sign a Chromebook agreement prior to the distribution of the devices. This agreement outlines the expectations for the student's use of the device as well as their responsibilities. Students are still accountable for the expectations outlined in our acceptable use policy and in the student handbook and code of conduct. In terms of the timeline for this rollout, this month we're preparing by sharing information with students and parents and providing ongoing professional development for teachers and staff on the procedural aspects of the Chromebook distribution and the use of the device in class. In March, we will begin to distribute the devices to students and provide them with training on how to use and care for the device now that, now that they'll have it with them all day. We will also be working with them to understand their personal responsibilities when using the device. Additional pro professional development is also being provided for teachers and staff on how to maximize the Chromebook as an instructional tool. A frequently asked questions page can be found under the technology section on our webpage. This information should help parents and students understand more about the one-to-one -one classroom Chromebook program and it will be updated as new questions are posed to us. We're actively researching the expansion of a similar one-to-one -one program for students in grades 9 through 12 for the 2020-21 school year, where we can also use grant funding to support that. And finally tonight, changing the subject, just a friendly reminder about our upcoming K-12 Instructional Night and STEM Showcase event that will be held on Thursday, March the 12th. This is an exciting night where students get to tell us about all the things they're learning and families can enjoy STEM activities and various demonstrations. Our PTO in support of the after prom program will be selling dinner prior to the event and we certainly hope that you all can join us that evening for a fun night of watching our students at work. This concludes my report this evening, Ms. Sheila. Questions or comments? Yes. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, please. Um, I, I noticed there was middle school, and then you said in the future for high school, is there any future looking forward to maybe doing it at fifth grade and elementary? Mm -hmm. Right now, we probably will be able to next year roll out a program at the elementary school where every classroom has a Chromebook um, charging station of 30 Chromebooks in their classroom. Mm -hmm. So you, every student's assigned a particular Chromebook, not just one of the ones in the room? That's correct. So you'll know exactly be, who's using which, which device? Okay. Yes, it has a label on it with their name and they're assigned an asset tag, tag to it. So if it gets <clears> lost, we'll know who to return it to. If there's any damage, we'll know whose device it is right we're, away. We're prepared for about three or four to be dropped every day, right, Jay, in, the, in the hallway? That's, how, how are they tough? Will they take a yeah, beating? They are, <laughs> yeah, they can your take a beating. They're, they're yeah. They're fairly, they're similar to what you have in front of okay. you. So the case is very sturdy and they're, they don't have a hard drive, so there's not too much inside of them that can get damaged, but we're prepared and understand that they may get dropped. I placed two iPhones this week, so I know how that goes. <laughs> <laughs> the dropping thing. <laughs> I have another question, if I may. Um, why was, or the decision not to let them take it home Right now, in the early fall, we did a survey with our parents asking them how many um, of our students had access to a device at home that was connected to the internet. 94% of those students 
um, and parents responded that they have a way for students to connect. So we just didn't feel that the risk of sending them home warranted doing that. So we decided to move in the direction of the one-to-one -one classroom. How long do we foresee being able to have these Chromebooks uh, for use? I mean, are they are they devices that can be used for three-year period, two-year? I mean, what's the what's the lifetime expectancy? I would say we can anticipate having them anywhere from three to seven years. They automatically update. Um, on their own so that's another saving factor for us because of our short few number of staff members we don't actually have to put our hands on every device to update it um, and so they're very durable and because we aren't replacing hard drives and memory and things like that we can use them for extended period of time that was one of the reasons we opted to go with a Chromebook instead of a laptop is it going to be continued after the middle school opens up yes yes Dr. Fox, you said that the uh, Chromebooks would be plugged in at night. So I guess that would make sense that everybody would just plug in the one. About 94% have access to the internet at home. The other 6% have uh, any possible solutions for that? We are. We're working with um, some staff to their programs through some of the internet service providers where families who may be on free and reduced lunch can access internet services for a reduced rate. So we're working on getting that information out and communicated um, to parents and students. We also have after school activities a couple of days a week so students can access devices there after school should they need it. Our library obviously has access for students. So if we find out that there's a need for a particular family or student, we'll try to find a solution for them so they have access. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Dr. Fox. You're welcome. Thank you. All right. Um, moving on to public comment, Ms. Reimers, are there any cards? They are not. Okay. Uh, then I'll ask Mr. Freeman to read the consent agenda. Okay, for, for tonight's consent agenda, we have approval of financial reports, approval of personnel action, authorization to change appropriation, and to accept and expend funds in accordance with the request, approval of minutes of January's regular meeting, work session and closed session, and finally, approval of minutes of public forum on budget on January 30th, 2020. Thank you. Do we have a move to approve the consent agenda? So moved. <clears throat> Second. All right. Ms. Reimers? Mm. Mr. Hogan? Aye. Ms. Hessel? Aye. Mr. Jordan? Aye. Mr. Freeman? Aye. Vice Chair Aye. We have other matters for consideration. Dr. Parrish? Yes, um, we are bringing to you the calendar for the 2020-2021 school year, which is next year. As you may remember, um, we, I did share information with you that the determination was made um, that we would not attempt to do a, a pre-Labor Day start for next school year after working with the other Peninsula School Divisions, of which we all share New Horizons. I think I also mentioned to you, too, that the realization that um, what really would need to happen is we need to be given more than just the 14 days um, ahead of Labor Day to do the start and that that may be taken to the General Assembly next year so you wouldn't see the pre-Labor Day start um, in the 2021-2022 school year. So with that said, the calendar that we're bringing forward to you this evening is very similar to the one that we have this year. Of note is that it does contain the two-week winter break. We've got a lot of feedback from parents and staff um, of how beneficial that two-week break was. And people came back, and they were actually I think, ready to be back and ready to start work um, when that break ended. So that is in the break. It is, again, a regional calendar, so we do share a few of the um, same professional development days with the other um, school divisions as we attempt to make sure that we have New Horizons scheduled where we can all access it. So with that calendar, do note though there's only 181 student days, so it does only give us one inclement weather uh, day next year. So uh, fingers crossed that next year is an easy year when it comes to um, weather, whether it's um, hurricanes, flooding, or snow, which, yes, in case you're wondering, I'm fully aware of the fact that we may get snow Thursday night to Friday morning. My wonderful husband made sure that I realized that before the meeting tonight. So um, we, we may be out on the roads. Um, just a reminder to the community that we will make the decision as soon as we possibly can, but sometimes we need to get up early and see those roads and can't make the, night, the decision the night before, but would push anything out by 6 o'clock in the morning. So... Um, so with all of that said, I am bringing forward to you um, the recommendation 
the calendar for the 2021 school year. Thank you, Dr. Parrish. Do we have a motion to approve the, uh, the calendar? Just a quick question first. Um, Dr. Parrish, how many uh, inclement weather days do we have built in for this school year? This school year, we had two built in, so we had to use one this fall. Um, and so we do have one left. So if we were to miss school on Friday, it, that would be the final inclement weather day. If we do not use it, I'll bring forward a recommendation to you then to short by day. So we'll see what happens. <laughs> Having that problem. Thanks. Any other questions or comments? All right. Do we have a motion to approve the consideration of approval of the PCS calendar for the 2020 2021? Thank you. Second. <laughs> All right. Any other questions or comments? Ms. Reimers. Mr. Holden. Aye. Aye. Mr. Jordan. Aye. Mr. Freeman. Aye. Vice Chair Aye. Aye. And now we have the consideration of approval of moving the first reading of changes to the policy manual to the second reading. Yes, um, as uh, we often talk about the fact we often have to update policy because of changes made in the General Assembly. So we'll be bringing those recommendations to you as we typically do in May or June based on the work that we're seeing. I suspect we'll have quite a few of those that will need your approval at the end of the year but what I'm bringing to you this evening are policies that we need to make some changes to so they align with our current practices as well um, so you've got several of them in here and um, asking that you approve the move to second reading for your next board meeting Thank you, dr. Parrish do we have a motion to move this first reading of changes to the policy manual to a second read so move second all right, questions, comments, anyone? Mr. Reimers? Mr. Hogan? Aye. Ms. Hessel? Aye. Mr. Jordan? Aye. Mr. Freeman? Aye. Vice Chair Sheila? Aye. Motion passes 5 0. We have a consideration of approval of the proclamation for the National School Breakfast Week and the Career and Tech Ed Education Month. And I have that proclamation right here. Whereas studies have shown that access to nutritious programs such as the National School Lunch Program and National School Breakfast Program helped create strong learning environments for children and help improve children's concentration in the classroom. And studies show that children who participate in school breakfast programs eat more fruits, drink more milk, and consume less saturated fat than those who do not eat breakfast and children who fail to eat breakfast, whether in school or at home, are more likely to be overweight than children who eat healthy breakfast on a daily basis. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed on this 18th day of February in the year 2020 by the School Board of the City of Pocoston, Virginia, that the week of March 2nd to the 6th be hereby celebrated as National School Breakfast Program Week in all Pocoston City Public Schools. And our second proclamation is Career and Tech Ed Month. Whereas economic and technological changes in our society are rapidly reflected in the structure and nature of today's workplace, thereby, thereby placing new and additional responsibilities on our educational system. And whereas career and technological education are part of the foundation of a strong, well-educated workforce that fosters productivity in business and industry and contributes to Virginia's leadership in the international marketplace. And whereas through career and technical education, students gain experience in practical and meaningful applications of basic skills such as reading, writing, and mathematics, thereby improving the quality of their education. And whereas career and technical education offers individuals lifelong opportunities to learn skills that provide them with more <laughs> career choices, expanded earning potential, and greater job satisfaction. This year's theme, Celebrate Today, Own Tomorrow, demonstrates the crucial role that career and technical education plays in readying our students for successful careers. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed on this 18th day of February in the year 2020 by the School Board of the City of Pocosin, Virginia, that the month of February be hereby celebrated as Career and Technical Education Month in all Pocosin City 
public schools. All right. Now we have communications and other matters. I'm sorry. My apologies. Yes. So, do I hear a motion to approve so those proclamations? So moved. <laughs> thank you, Second. Mr. Holcomb. Mm -hmm. And thank you. Ms. <laughs> uh, Rymers. Mr. Holcomb. Aye. Ms. Hessel. Aye. Mr. Jordan. Aye. Mr. Freeman. Aye. Vice Chair Sheila. Aye. Motion passes five to And now we have other matters for consideration. <laughs> <laughs> we have communications, and uh, Dr. Josh? Parrish, yes. if you can kick us off, that would be awesome. Uh, Ms. Woodruff did a great job of updating you in the budget, and I know I addressed that before with health insurance, but just a reminder to you and the community that the budget is really fluid right now as we wait to see what the General Assembly does um, in terms of the final budget. I do want to... Um, make sure that you know, which is always the case, that the city manager and I are talking regularly about the budget. So as I get information with him and he's doing the same. So as we talk about the challenges that the city is facing in their budget development, he um, continues to update me so that um, we know where they are and what we may have to do um, on our own this year and had to do in the past. Um, I also want to echo Dr. Fox's invitation to the instructional showcase. Um, if you have a chance to attend, both board members and those out in the community, uh, it really is a, um, provides a wonderful opportunity for our students and teachers to show the different projects that we're doing, many of which support some of our innovative practices and um, that are supported by the DODIA grants that um, we've been really fortunate to, to achieve and to get. So um, if you're able to just pop by on March 12th, it would be a great experience for you and for anybody who's out in the listening audience. And a big shout out to Ms. Edwards, who's here as our um, liaison to Langley and to Fort Eustis because it's through her support and others that we're able to um, capture those, those grants. Also, I noted earlier that it was School Board Clerk Appreciation Month. It is also School Board Appreciation Month. So I want to take this <laughs> opportunity to thank each one of you for the hard work that you do as the school board members. Um, a lot of meetings and people don't realize, but you also have to get the texts and the phone calls and the updates from me. So you're regularly engaged in your work as school board members and um, work that you do on behalf of um, the children in our school as well as the community as a whole. So thank you for that. I do want to make a note in case anybody's wondering where Dr. Carter is, our board chair. Um, his son was in an accident um, and had to have surgery. He is recovering well right now, but that's why he was unable to attend this evening. So um, with that, those are the end of my comments for the evening. Thank you, Dr. Parrish. Uh, Ms. Jamie? Okay, so for the instructional report of the month of February for Vacosin Primary School. Vacosin Primary School loves reading. We welcomed high school students into our classrooms to read their original children's stories to our youngest students. The Vacosin Public Library shared new books to take home with students who purchased breakfast on February 12th. We also love new kindergarten students and successfully launched our online student re registration with our kindergarten registration kickoff event. If you or someone you know has a preschool or kindergarten age student, please check out our school website for more information. We would also like to thank our PTO for setting up a coffee and chocolate station on Valentine's Day for our staff. We loved it. Bacosan Elementary School. On January 31st, the PES students attended an assembly funded by the PTO called Aliens Escape from Earth, an interactive story that used science experiments and special effects. PES fifth graders have registered for their sixth grade classes, and this coming Thursday, February 12th, there is a parent meeting at PMS at 6 p.m. for the rising sixth grade parents. On February 12th, the PES third graders attended a concert by the Virginia Symphony. The teacher, the music teacher, Mrs. Brooke, arranged for the students to be able to go to this concert and supported the field trip with student learning in their music class about what they would see and hear. The PES PTO has purchased a gaga pit for students at Pocosin Elementary School. This is a, a fast-paced, high-energy sport played in an octagonal pit with a soft foam ball and combines the skills of dodging, striking, running, and jumping while trying to hit opponents with the ball below the knees. Parents should stay tuned for more news about the gaga pit. <laughs> this, <laughs> this past Friday was the second quarter awards assemblies and it was wonderful to celebrate student success with their families. To top the day off, our PTO provided a sweet treats bar and the faculty, 
faculty lounge, which was enjoyed by all. But goes to middle school. PMS hosted our annual Battle of the Classes competition last week, and what an exciting week it was. This week included themed dress-up days, coin wars, and lunchtime games. There was truly something for everyone, and the first time in history, sixth grade was declared the winner. We are also busy this month conducting parent information nights for our rising sixth, seventh, and eighth grade students. Topics covered during these events include course information, the registration process, and preparing students for high school and beyond. The PMS library is gearing up to host Oscars for Books on February 21st. Students create book-shaped cakes decorated with scenes from their favorite books. Our all-in character trait for this quarter is kindness. At the beginning of the quarter, students viewed an interactive all-in video featuring our all-in Avengers, Kid Kindness and Mr. Respectable. PMS faculty and staff are assisting our heroes by awarding golden tickets to students for displaying kind behavior. Kindness, kindness quotes from superheroes and notable figures of history are shared on the announcements each morning. Because in middle school was all, all in for kindness in quarter three. Because in high school. The P PHS Bulls are off and running in a, into the second semester, both in and out of the classroom. Students are engaged in the meaningful learning experiences across curriculum. For example, students in economics and personal finance courses design their dream spring break trip along with a detailed budget and logistic outline. Students in creative outline shared their original short stories with students at the primary school. Additionally, all students were exposed to a variety of career fields through the second annual PCPS Secondary Career Fair. In addition to speaking with a host of professionals who sparked interest in elective course options at Pocosna High School that are associated with specific career paths, students viewed a video highlighting course elective options, which was developed by students in our digital marketing course. With this information, students have compiled their online course registration, and our school counselors are meeting with students and families to review the selections and plan for post-secondary success. Our Islanders are also excelling in their extracurricular activities, as students are continuing to meet post-season success in indoor track, swimming, and wrestling. Looking to the future, SCA is bringing our school community together by sponsoring our Spring Spirit Week during the week of March 2nd, which will accumulate with Spring Fest on Saturday, Saturday, March 7th, and we hope all students will attend for music, games, and a petting zoo. Thank you. This concludes the instructional report for February. Thank you. Thank you, Jamie. Good job. Mr. Holcomb? Thank you. You have no comment tonight. All right. Ms. Helfer? Great update, Jamie. I just want to thank Mr. Trotman. It was great to have you on the board, and good luck in Richmond. Very good. Mr. Jordan? Um, one of the things that I like about coming to the meeting is <clears throat> seeing the recognition for our Volunteers of the Month. Um, and, uh, you know, here at Pocosin, we're so fortunate to have so many uh, volunteers that, uh, gosh, if we recognized everyone, we'd be here for the duration of the rest of the evening. <laughs> I'm trying to do that. So um, it's, it's always great recognizing someone in our community, but there are so many others that volunteer their time, their effort, their energy, you know, from readers to little things with their and things like that. So that does not go unnoticed, um, and we appreciate everyone's support. Thanks. Mr. Freeman? I'd like to, uh, you know, again, express my appreciation of Michael Troutman and the work he did with the board. He was a great person, and we're going to miss him. And best of luck in Richmond. Um, also, with the one-to-one -one initiative coming, that's going to be really, really great. I would encourage the division to look at a program called Go Guardian to go with that. And then... Um, Thank you. Um, I have an update. Uh, as, as we all know, our dear Superintendent Parrish will be moving on to a new stage in her career at the end of the school year, and we wish her the very best in her new position. We have been extremely fortunate in hiring the services of Dr. Steve Staples <coughs> to guide the school board in finding a new superintendent. Dr. Staples is, a, is the retired state superintendent for public instruction as well as the former York County Superintendent, a position he held for 19 years. In addition, Dr. Staples has consistently served as a professor at the College of William and Mary. We are grateful for his guidance at this critical time for our school system. I want to draw your attention to the homepage of our uh, Pocosin School website. Uh, scrolling down from the top, you'll find a link to a survey for parents and students, teachers, employees, and community members. The survey asks for the characteristics 
you value most in a leader in Pocosin. Please do this soon because the survey does close on February 26th and your opinion matters to us. Choosing a new superintendent is a critically important decision for your school board, for your school system, and for your whole city. I wonder how many families besides our own moved to Pocosin because of the school system. We will continue to provide uh, regular updates as we move through this process. Uh, currently, we're taking applications for superintendents until March 13th, and we plan to choose a successor by early May so that Dr. Parrish can help the new person acclimate best to new responsibilities. And one other comment, as a Board Appreciation Month, I just want to say that Lena Reimers is amazing. I do not know where I would be without Lena Reimers. <laughs> she keeps us on track, showing up on time, and in the right place, very helpful, and makes us all look good. This is a big achievement. Thank you, Lena. <laughs> all right, and uh, let's see. Do we have material for board review? We do not this evening. Okay, well, um, then we can move on to close set, closed session for the consideration of personnel matters. We stand adjourned. <laughs>